Now, joining me now to discuss this is New South Wales Labor leader Jodie Mackay in Sydney. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Shari. Now, New South Wales is moving towards a bigger shutdown of retailers, clothing stores, footwear, uh, personal ex accessory stores. Do you think this is the right course of action? Yes, I do. Um, I've been uh, quite vocal in my call for a greater shutdown or a lockdown. So I would hope that tonight New South Wales will go it alone. I've said uh, for two weeks now that if the Premier was to go down that path, I would certainly support her. Can I say, Shari, that I actually believe she was headed there a couple of weeks ago on that Sunday night National Cabinet meeting. Uh, there were certainly messages coming from her office that she would shut down schools and, of course, that she would go into a lockdown except for essential businesses. Um, I came out, I supported her and of course the next day that didn't happen. Yeah, she was headed there a week ago, uh, but it's a national cabinet and uh, the consensus decision was not to go that far and that it wasn't needed at that point. But what I want to ask you is, is, is the, the flip side of such a, a, a severe lockdown that you're actually calling for, which is far beyond what the Premier wants, is that millions of people will be left without a job and it could potentially take years, even a decade, for the Australian economy to recover. You know, what is your response to this? Yeah, look, I think that there are two schools of thought here. One is uh, the uh, backing where the Prime Minister is and where the Premier seems to be right now. The other, of course, is backed by you know, some 10,000 doctors uh, through a petition uh, that uh, a doctor at Westmead has. And as you know, even those academics from the Group of Eight that are advising uh, the health ministers around the country, they're divided on this. Um, I actually believe that it needs to be short and it needs to be hard and it needs to be fast. And uh, I think that the economy can recover much quicker from that. Um, can I say that uh, what we're also pushing for uh, is a wage replacement, now better known as a wage subsidy, wage guarantee, basic wage, uh, but it's operating in the UK, it's now operating in New Zealand. I think New Zealand is the model that, uh, that I'm advocating for. In, look, in terms of the cruise ships that I just mentioned a moment ago, you know, hearing those passengers cheer to the news that they don't have to self-isolate when they've come from overseas is sickening, along with the 200 confirmed cases from the Ruby Princess. Do you think heads should roll over this? Yeah, look, I, I just, I mean, people are very angry about this and so they should. 2,700 passengers just off the Ruby Princess. Uh, as of today, there's 215 confirmed cases. But of course, what concerns people is because they didn't uh, go into isolation, uh, they got in a taxi and uh, they got on a train, they got on a bus, they got on another plane. So, so and should, what should that Ruby Princess... Who's, who's responsible? Should heads roll over this? Would you sack the New South Wales health boss, Dr Kerry Chant? Uh, what I would say is that the buck stops with the Premier on this and uh, she came out on Wednesday I think it was and said that she'd made a phone call to Peter Dutton the night before and uh, that of course followed uh, the uh, head of uh, Border Force coming out and saying that uh, uh, it was New South Wales Health's responsibility but ultimately she's the Premier. Um, there's been no apology, there's certainly been uh, no explanation but can I say that what that did Shari is it took it from a Sydney issue into a New South Wales issue so as a result of that we have have people in Marimbula and Bega, we've got people in the northwest in Tamworth, all the way up to Lismore now. So this is no longer just a Sydney issue and I think that is another reason why we should look at a lockdown. There are another two figures if I may just point out to you. Uh, since Friday the number of intensive care, uh, uh, um, uh, people in intensive care has increased from 19 to 24 and the other important figure is the number of community transmissions from an unknown source. Uh, so that's quadrupled since Friday. So it's not just the total number. We we actually have to dig down and look at what is happening there. Do you think the Premier's response uh, to parents on school closures was adequate? There was mass confusion. People no. didn't know whether they should send their kids to school or not. The Prime Minister said stay in school. She said schools will be open uh, but keep your children home where possible. Yeah, I think that there's uh, very confusing messages there and I know that teachers are anxious and uh, they really uh, don't know whether they should be at school or not. There's 2,200 schools that are currently open. Do you open. think they should close uh, or remain open? Yes, I do. No, I think they should close and I think childcare facilities uh, should close. Even though that's against really the medical, even though it's against the medical advice that, that, that schools well, should I, remain I, open? Yeah, can I, can I again say to you that there are different views on this. I also think that while schools remain open, there are conflicting messages that are going out to the community. Um, schools need to be closed. You have teachers, you have parents, you have children that are congregating there. We're seeing less than 10% of schools that are, are actually being, uh, are actually seeing students, sorry, that we're seeing 10% of the student population attend schools. But what in the UK, what they do, for instance, is they have a select number of schools in key areas and uh, they uh, cater for the children of essential workers 
and they also uh, cater for students who are disadvantaged or perhaps need that extra care of a, a school environment. So I think that is the model. Having 2,200 schools uh, open is, is not what we should be doing at this particular time. Uh, the Premier has indicated that we are technology ready and I think those schools should close.